Hey everybody, it's about time to start. Y'all like the tacos? Give them, a, give them a hand. Yeah. They can hear you from here. We got several gone today, so y'all are going to have to sing out, but I'm glad you're here. Welcome to Grace Point. If this is your first time, I'm Chase Allman, uh, the boring Chase, I guess. Chase McCurley is a cooler guy. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. Jimmy Poe is one of our youth leaders. He helps with our youth, so he's going to lead some singing with us. Before we do that, I'll say a word of prayer. Let's pray. God, thank you again for the chance to come together and worship you, to celebrate you, to grow closer to you. I pray that you uh, be with us all tonight as we open our minds to your word. We open our hearts to your teachings. We pray that we grow stronger as Christians as we, as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you. by step you'll lead me and I will follow you all of my days oh God you are my God and I will ever praise you oh God you are my God and I seek you in the morning and I will learn to walk in your ways and step by step you'll lead me and I will follow you all of my days and I will follow you all of my days and I will follow by step you'll lead me and I will follow you all of my days all right sopranos someday nobody knows this someday someday some and alto Peace and joy and happiness. <laughs> so, Tanner. Gotta be ready when he calls my name. Gotta be ready when he calls my name. Gotta be ready when he calls my name. Someday. Bass. And the Lord will sound and all the dead shall rise. Will the streets of gold someday? Trumpets will sound and the dead shall rise off the streets of gold someday. <clears throat> Hosanna, you're my king. I think I did that wrong. My King, thank you, Chase. I worship and I sing. I lift your holy name up on high. I worship and adore. Sing praise forevermore. Hosanna, you're my King forevermore. Hosanna, we praise you. We praise your matchless name. Love has in a ring 
upon high, he died and was again, I was friends praise, you are the great I am. It's, it's, yeah, this is like my first time under a big group. So, yeah, be, be, you know, be with me. Is Yeah, I've, I've totally spaced on this. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> we say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see. What the Lord has done in me. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. Jesus Christ has set me free. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. Y'all can be seated. I won't make y'all stay anymore. You are Lord of creation and Lord of my life. Lord of the land and the sea. You are Lord of the heavens before there was time. Lord of all lords you will be. Bow down, and we worship you, Lord. We bow down, and we worship you, Lord. We bow down, and we worship you, Lord. Lord of all, Lord, you will be. You are King of creation and King of my life. King of the land and the sea, you were king of the heavens before there was time, and king of all kings you will be. We bow down and we crown you the king, we bow down and we crown you the king, we bow down. And we crown you the king, king of all kings you will be. Thank you, Jimmy. Give it up to Jimmy.
He is not a main song leader, I guess, Jimmy. He's still one of those guys that has that silly fear of singing. Thank you guys for coming. I'm glad you're here. I know a lot of people are gone. They're, they come back from a trip and they're too tired to come, but I, I'm glad that you're here tonight. Uh, we'll look at Psalm 51 if you want to turn to your Bibles. Everything I talk about will be on the screen, so you don't need to pull it out if you don't, have, uh, if you don't want to. Uh, but I, I'm going to congratulate you first. The first thing I'm going to start off doing tonight is celebrating you and celebrating your faith. We could all be better Christians. There's no good Christians. We're all trying to do our best. But the fact that you're here, most of you have been, many of you have been baptized. I don't say most. I don't know your situation. But if you have been baptized and you are faithful, that means something. Everyone right now is screaming about how crazy the world is. The world's on fire. The world's in a terrible spot. If you can be a Christian now, I think you can make it. Okay? The world's trying to confuse you. They're trying to confuse your gender. They're trying to attack our money right now. Uh, there's not much security in the world right now. So if you can be a Christian through this, I think you will survive. I think you'll make it. But you can always be better. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about clean hearts. And we're going to use the example of David, the man, and his heart as well. David was a good man. If he went to church at your church or at this church, we'd call him a good Christian. We say that he was good. Uh, but David had some problems as well. So we'll look at Psalm 51. First, we're going to look at David's situation, the context surrounding the psalm, the meaning of the psalm, because you may not know exactly what Psalm 51 means. David was a good man. You've heard likely that David was a man after God's own heart. That means he has a pretty good heart if we're talking about clean hearts. I would like to have the heart of David. But David does not want to have the heart of David. David thinks he's got a bad heart. Now he's asking in, in Psalm 51 for a clean heart from God. And not his heart made clean, but a new heart that is clean. Why is David asking for that? If anyone knows this story, what's just gone on? He just met with Nathan the prophet, and what had Nathan just done? He had called him out for his sin. What had David done? that Nathan had to come down on him about. Does anyone know? It's a girl. He slept with Bathsheba. He made that kind of PG. Let's really say what he did. What did he do? Let's really line this out. Because David's a good guy, right? King David, he's leading God's people. He's a good person. He rapes a woman and kills her husband. Let's not beat around the bush here. Some people want to hide David's sin here. They want to lessen it because David's a good guy, and if he can do these terrible things, how is he still a good guy? So we want to rationalize it. David took Bathsheba. She didn't want to do it. She was scared for her life. He's the king. What's he going to do to me? He's going to kill me. So she goes along with it. He sleeps with her. And now Uriah's got to be dealt with. Well, the king can stamp a letter. He can send it with Uriah himself. He can get him killed. He tries to trick Uriah to come sleep with Bathsheba to, to make sure everything's okay. But he takes a woman that is not his and he kills her husband. David needed a clean heart, okay? David was not in a good place right now. And he may have, he likely knew what he was doing was wrong at the time. But when Nathan the prophet came to him, he gave him this parable of the man who owned hundreds of sheep and a man who owned one. And this rich man took the, the single sheep from the man and David said, kill him. Take his head off. Nathan said, that's you. And that's the context that David comes into Psalm 51 with. That's what's on his mind and on his heart. It's an incredible weight. He put it there. He put the sin there. He gave himself the burden that he's dealing with now. But he knows, I have finally recognized my sinful state and I don't like it. I don't want to be in this sinful spot anymore. I've defiled myself. I've made my heart dirty. I've made it impure. So now I come to God. We'll pick up uh, uh, pieces of Psalm 51, but our focus is on 10 through 12. So look at verses 1 through 4. This is him coming to God, repenting, asking for mercy. He says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you only 
have I sinned, and I've done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Now look at verse 7 and verse 9. He says, Purge me with hyssop, uh, hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Verse 9, he says, Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. And now, verses 10 through 12, a passage where uh, we get a, a song that we sing from, that Jimmy's going to sing as an invitation song. He says now, God, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. This is David's prayer. This is his request. He says, create in me a clean heart. Give me a clean heart. I do not currently have a clean heart, and I need one. Have mercy on me. Don't look at my sins. Don't look at my transgressions, because they're going to make you mad. Please erase them. Please purge me. Please cleanse me. And this purification, this cleansing, this making new, is not a half-hearted commitment to God. He's not saying, I still want to continue in sin and and be made clean at the same time. He says, take all of me and make all of me clean. Rip out the disease. Take out the cancer. Get rid of the sin and make me clean again. This was a total commitment, a purging, blotting out, a cleansing. This wasn't a new start. This was a new everything. He's asking for a new heart. David's not asking God to purify part of him. He says, purify all of me. Today, who can make us clean? God. So now we, we come to us. Now we have to apply it to ourselves. David needed to pray this prayer. He needed a clean heart from God. But what about you? Anyone here uh, rape someone and kill their partner? Some weird looking guys over here. I don't know. I don't know. Guys, no. So why do I need a clean heart? I'm not as bad as David. There's no way I'll live the rest of my life in this earth and I'll never rape a woman and kill her husband. That's just not something I'm going to do. I can guarantee that. That's not ever going to be a problem of mine. So why do I need a clean heart? Well, do you need a clean heart? Why? See, uh, for us to understand that we need a clean heart, we've got to look at ourselves. We've got to ask ourselves if we are dirty or if we have sin in our life. I'm not going to tell you how sinful you are. You can answer for yourself. Are you dirty? Do you have an unclean heart? Are you a bad person? Now, it may go like this. It may go up and down. You may be better some weeks and worse other weeks. You may get into a pit of sin and depression. You may get inside your own head. Your peer group at school may rotate and change, and negative elements come into your life. So it's never neutral. It's never one flat line. So you may feel good one day and feel bad the next, but separated from Christ, are we good? You can answer. No. Separated from Christ, can we ever be good? No. Goodness comes from who? comes from God. Without God, anything that we call goodness is just a cheap imitation. It's a joke. Who, who we think are moral and who God thinks is moral is entirely different. So we today, I today and you today, we all make it individual. Make it yourself. You need a clean heart. So we've got to involve ourselves here. And if we want to look at this here, heart and spirit, he says in the prayer, create me a clean heart, renew a right spirit in me. Those are used interchangeably for the innermost part of man. So he's asking God, take my core, take who I am. But if we wanted to uh, 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 dif- dissociate between the two, if we want to make them two separate things, your heart is kind of the man that you are, and your spirit is your divine side, your heavenly side. So David is asking God here, make me morally and spiritually new. Clean all of me. Take every bit you can. So David's asking for a new heart. He's committing his entire mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical side to God, trying to make everything right because he knows right now I am corrupt. So again, you and me. Is your heart separated from God? If it is, it is not clean. Clean means good. 
good comes from God, you cannot be clean without God. David in verse uh, 14, if you do have it open, calls our sin our blood guiltiness. He says, I have blood on my hands. And he meant that literally, uh, literally and figuratively. I've sinned against you. You can't have God's blood on your hands, but you break the blood covenant with Jesus when you sin against Him. So His blood is on your hands. But literally, I've killed Uriah, and His blood is on my hands. My, the sword is going to be in my house now. Uh, God's going to pronounce judgment on me. I'm not in a good place. Take my heart, take my spirit, and make it new. Because all sin ultimately leads to what? Death. That's the price for sin. That's the repayment for sin. Goodness or cleanness leads to life. So that's what David asks for. Give me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. And create in me, the word used for create here, literally means make something exist that did not exist before. It's not David saying take my current state and make it better. He says, give me a new state of being. Give me a new heart. And renew means to make new. Make a new heart for me and transplant that into me because my current heart is not good enough. I was doing okay and I defiled myself. I corrupted myself. I made myself dirty. So you need to make something new that is not here now. For our hearts to be clean, we've got to do the same thing. We've got to surrender to God. We cannot make our hearts clean. We cannot clean them. If you imagine your heart is something that you can handle and that you can interact with, if you are a dirty person and you interact with your heart, what do you then make your heart? You make it dirty. Make it literal here. Someone's covered in mud and you've got your nice clean heart. Are you going to give it to a dirty person or are you going to protect it from them? You're, you should protect it from them. Some of you and some of us don't. A dirty person makes things dirty. A person in sin makes things sinful. I can't believe the world is as terrible as the world is. Why not? They're people in sin. They're dirty people. Of course when you take your children into the world, they're going to get them dirty. Of course when you live in the world, you are going to get dirty. So then when you get dirty, what do you do? How do we get clean hearts? We too have to do the same thing. We've got to surrender our heart to God. And what we're really doing here, your creatures are free will, right? Free will means what? It means you've got the power, the authority to do what you will do in your life. Free will is a dangerous thing and a beautiful thing. Free will can either be the greatest blessing in your life or the biggest curse. Because we're not good with free will. When we've been given the authority to do with our life what we think is best for our life, we don't make the right choices. Ever. We're not good at using our agency of free will. So what David is doing here is he's almost removing his free will willingly. He's saying, God, I freely choose to no longer be free. This heart of mine is bad. I need a new heart that is yours. Take all of me and make me clean. I cannot handle my heart anymore. I am not good at using free will, so I willingly, freely choose to no longer be free. I imprison myself in you so that I don't get myself dirty. Now, if you learn this, uh, if you want to call it a hack, if you want to call it a shortcut, call it whatever you want. This is the key to success. Surrendering your free will to God. The world doesn't do that. They love their free will. They cling to it. And if you learn from them, you're going to do the same thing. Whenever you decide to get dirty, you're going to get dirty because that's what you're allowing yourself to do. But if you take your free will and you give it to God, you are putting parameters around yourself. I don't want to be a Christian because God's got so many rules. He's got so many laws. I can't break the things that He says. I want to do what I want to do. No, no, no. As a Christian, I willingly impose boundaries on myself because I'm so dumb. I cannot 
live a good enough life without these parameters, without these boundaries. So God's not boxing me in, I'm boxing myself in. And these uh, parameters, if you want to call them that, are our spiritually, uh, spiritual disciplines. Going to church regularly, going to events like these, reading your Bible, singing praises, those don't save you, but they go a long way in stopping you condemning yourself. That's why, oh man, all my youth minister says, all my preacher says is go to church, read my Bible. I need a connection with Jesus. I need a relationship with Him. We've got an understanding, Him and I. I don't need these spiritual disciplines. Okay, you can choose to do that, but you're playing with fire. I'm not a good enough Christian to not have parameters. Me, Chase. I am not good enough to not have four walls around my heart. Because as soon as I take down those walls, I will defile myself. And again, make this as literal as you want. If you take your heart out of your chest and you put it in the hands of God, will it ever become dirty again? No, because He's got it. But what you and I do, man, it's Friday, going out to the river, going out to a, a ball game, parents aren't going to be there. God, can I have that? I'm going to take this, I'll give it back because I'm a good Christian, but I, I want to hold this for a little bit. And a dirty person makes things what? Makes things dirty. So as soon as we take that from God, we defile it. We ruin it. We wreck it. We mess it up. And then we take this miserable, dirty, wretched heart and say, here you go, God. I don't know why I'm hurting. I don't know why I'm sick. I don't know why I'm spiritually depressed. Because we can't handle our heart right at all. We're not, I'm not good enough. Maybe you are. I need parameters because I'm not good at using my free will. I need to willingly decide to no longer be free. Freely choose to become a slave to God. Give Him your life. There's still freedom there. This yoke of slavery that we think God is going to place on us, this bur incredible burden, Jesus is the one that carries the burden. So <laughs> we're... We're making it as easy on ourselves as we possibly can when we take ourselves out of the driver's seat. You know, driving a car takes attention. Riding in a car, you don't have to do a thing. My wife hadn't learned that lesson. She participates in someone else's job. She tries to drive for me sometimes. We're out of the driver's seat when we say, God, my life is yours. Is he ever going to wreck? Is he ever going to make a mistake? Is he ever going to go the wrong direction? No, we can just coast because he's got us. So how do we get clean hearts? The same way David did. We say the same prayer. We ask the same things. God, make my heart clean. Renew it. Purge it. Do whatever you have to do. Blot out my transgressions. And he says also, cast me not away from your presence. Don't let me ever leave your side. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. He implies that that's possible. You can lose the Spirit by surrendering it, by letting it go. David says, please don't let that happen. And then he also says something weird. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Salvation never loses its goodness or its wonderfulness or its joyousness. We lose sight of how good salvation is. So David, man after God's own heart, one of the best guys of all guys, says, I want to know how joyous salvation can be again now so that I can know it in eternity as well. Make my spirit willing Uphold me in that. Hold me to this. Make me promise to dedicate myself and do this. Maybe some of us need to choose to do what David did and let God control our life. Verse 17, David says, God's sacrifices are broken spirits. They're broken and contrite hearts. So to serve God best, humble yourself. Make yourself contrite. So now, you've recognized that your heart is dirty, and now you've gone and asked God to make it clean. Can you keep your heart clean? No. Unfortunately, not. Again, because when we want to interact without God, when we want to do our life, whatever we think that is, we will defile ourselves again. As soon as I clean my house, it gets dirty again immediately. Anything that you clean will get dirty the instant that you stop constantly cleaning it. That's just the state of things. Even if something is perfect, just dust will settle on it. Nothing can stay perfectly clean once you've cleaned it. It will get dirty again. 
So you shouldn't let that depress you. You shouldn't let that crush you. You should try and stay clean. I, I mean, if we say God's going to clean my heart at all times, but then we take our heart and we jump in a mud pit with the pigs, of course we're going to defile our heart. So we can avoid the mud pits. We can avoid the parties where no parents are there, where alcohol and a bunch of girls are for us guys, or, or boys, if girls like boys. I don't think they do. We can avoid the poisonous, toxic, uh, toxic people in the world. We can see, obviously, this is a bad person. If we invite those situations into our life, we're inviting messes into our life. We're creating more work for ourselves if we try and do that. So we can avoid that. But we're still, we're going to mess up here and there. We're going to make our, heart, our hearts dirty again. So what do we do? Go get it clean again. It's really that simple. Go right back to God. Say, hey, I messed up. I made a mistake. Please renew my heart. Uh, not vindictively. We're not cheating the system here. David just made one of the biggest mistakes in his life that he had no chance of escaping from. He goes to God and he finds grace for it. So for you slipping up in your faith, you think you can't go to God and get mercy and grace? You can, and you should. Renew a right spirit in me. Constantly make me clean. Constantly give me your spirit and not my own. It's a constant request. David wanted his heart and his spirit cleaned constantly. Renewed. Verse 11, he wanted to stay in God's presence. Verse 12, he asked for God's spirit to uphold his joy of salvation. So, can you keep your hearts clean? If you stay with God, you can. If you leave Him, you're going to get it dirty, but you can go back. And the time your heart is separated from God cannot be very long. You need to go back to Him quickly, as quickly as you can, so that He can keep your heart clean. This is what David had to learn. It's what the world, when Jesus taught, had to learn. It's what we today have to learn. We need clean hearts. And we can have them if we let God clean us. When your mom comes to clean your room, as moms tend to do because they're awesome, do you slam the door in her face? We got some moms shaking their heads. Never mind. Imagine someone says, I'll clean up your life for you and you pushing them away. How dumb is that? I've done it to God. God says, here's a new spirit, here's a new heart, and I've rejected him. Mine's fine. Mine's not dirty. I'm good at being a Christian without you. We lie to ourselves. But you don't have to. You can know that you're the dirty person and God is the clean one, but you can be made clean if you run to Him. So that's what you've got to decide to do. You, like David, have to have your eyes open to your dirty state. You have to know, I've sinned, my heart is not clean right now. And as soon as you realize you've got a problem, you've got to go to the solution. And the solution is God. Ask for His forgiveness. Ask for His grace. What's baptism? It's a washing, not as dirt off of the body, but as sin off of your spirit. Dirt off of your heart. That's what it is when you surrender yourself to God. And that's a constant decision. You have to do it every single day so that He continually keeps you clean. And then you just might know the joy of salvation. Those spiritual disciplines, those parameters, instead of rules, they'll instead become expressions of love. I love God enough to do these things. Not I have to do these things so that I love God. It's a much better system. If you need to come to God tonight, all you got to do is surrender. All you got to do is let Him take control. David couldn't do it. You can't do it. No one can do it without God. But with God, I can do all things. You can have a clean heart. Jimmy's going to sing a few more songs for us. If you want to come now, please do so while we stand and sing. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord.
restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me create in me a clean heart oh god and renew a right spirit Spirit within me, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Spirit within me. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with Cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with love. Down for a second. I'm going to invite Mr. Michael to come say a prayer. And after he does that, any announcements you got, Michael, anything you want to say? Thank you guys for coming. I love y'all. Michael. Let's pray. God, we're so grateful for this church. We're so grateful for uh, all the surrounding area churches. God, we're grateful for Summer Youth Series. Thank you so much uh, for blessing us today with the, the great songs, the great worship time, and the great lesson that was prepared for us. I pray that we can uh, take all of the things that we've learned tonight and put those toward our lives, that we can have clean hearts, and we can constantly keep those things clean. And and practice our spiritual disciplines. God, help us to remember to pray, to worship, to read our Bibles, and so on. God, we're so grateful for all you do for us every day. Keep us clean. Keep our hearts clean. And God, even when we try to take them away, try and convince us not to. Thank you so much for Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Let's go, real quick, just a couple uh, announcements. We have on the 30th... Um, we have Bono will be hosting, so yeah, let's hear it for Bono, yeah. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, so Bono will be hosting on the 30th. Um, they will begin at 6 o'clock, at least that's what I've been told. <laughs> uh, they'll begin at 6 o'clock, they'll have food, and then we'll have a worship service there too. I hope y'all can all make it. Uh, be sure to tell your youth ministers and, and other leaders uh, that, that we're going to do that. Okay, there is a meal and, uh, and worship. So, uh, Also, CRYC Teen Week is July 10th through the 15th. Um, Tyler Killo is the director. If y'all know who Tyler Killo is, he's kind of the director of that week. I'll be speaking on the 11th or the 12th, I don't remember. Uh, but I'll be speaking at one of those. It's at CRYC or what they call the Ridge now. Um, do what? Oh, sweet. He's going to be doing the ropes thing. Okay, awesome. Uh, so if y'all can make it to that, be sure to make it to that. Um, we're very grateful that y'all are here. Summer Youth Series has been uh, out of, we haven't been able to do it the last two summers. 
uh, really. Kind of, we did it kind of last year uh, as much as we could, but uh, it feels good to kind of be back into a normalcy again uh, with normal things going on. But we're really gra- glad that y'all came tonight. Really grateful for uh, Grace Point. Hey, let's let's give Grace Point a round of applause. We're really glad y'all did this. This is awesome. It's been a really great night. I uh, hope y'all can make it to the rest of them. And uh, if you know of a church, we we had somebody back out kind of on the last minute. Um, that would be hosting on the 15th of July. If there's a church you know of that might would want to, please come find me and I'll try to make that happen, okay? Thank y'all for very much.